So my, my session is uh, called Snickypedia. Uh, thanks for your time. So a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Mahmoud Ibrahman, or Yomu, uh, from Mysore, uh, part of Cybersecurity Malaysia. Uh, interested in malicious PDF as well as uh, Android malware reversing. So uh, the agenda for today, I'm going to cover a little bit about intro, um, and then a little bit about uh, obfuscation technique that we found out in the wild that have been used, and of course, a little bit about challenge and issues, and the last one is about conclusion. All right, introduction. So this is not about PDF reader application zero day, so don't get confused with that. And of course, it's also not about Adobe X Reader sandbox bypass. Okay, so this is plainly we're talking about PDF obfuscation, which is pretty much the same image, right? Camouflage or obfuscation, you can put whatever you want, right? So basically, when you talk about um, obfuscation, so you have a PDF plus obfuscation, what pretty much you expect to become? Transformer, maybe? Not really, right? Of course, you expect to become a PDF as well, right? So the topic for today is about you have a normal PDF or you have a PDF that we exploit, and then you want to obfuscate it. Uh, the main reason of why you want to obfuscate it, well, obviously, there are many reasons for that. Uh, Malicious PDF mainly came, uh, come with a two component. Uh, the first one is probably the exploit, and the second one is the, the payload itself, or shell code radar. And then, well, the main reason, like I mentioned, is need to be off the radar. How? Obviously, you need to look like a normal PDF. You cannot be, you cannot expect to look like a malform, because if you trigger that, then you somehow raise a red flag for any, uh, you know, security product for de detection. Um, of course, uh, what do you want to obfuscate? It's dependent on what kind of level that you want to go. Normally, people just obfuscate on the exploit, or people want to obfuscate on the shell code. But uh, the two most, con this main component will need to be obfuscated, right? Well, why are you obfuscating this one? Obviously, you want to stay uh, stealth, reducing for being detected. And one of another thing is try uh, to make uh, analysis harder. Because eventually, if you, if you were here for the previous presentation about APT, uh, there is always, you know, uh, we still believe somehow in the end of the day, your tool is going to be detected, right? But uh, you can make it analysis become more harder by implementing some obfuscation. So statistic of obfuscated analysis PDF, I don't think uh, statistic we somehow look at this way is always going up because that is pretty much a trend. So, yeah. And then the PDF in general. Uh, so I, I hope the, the PDF is serious enough nowadays. So this is pretty much the PDF. I tried to cover a little bit about the structures or the, the concept of, of PDF, OK? The first one is you see uh, on the green color box, you're going to have um, PDF uh, version, and on the PDF version, normally uh, you have something like percent something, percent something, and then you have PDF and then version numbers. Uh, one of the components that can be used to uh, fool a couple of uh, PDF analyzer tools is by playing around with the version numbers. Uh, so not version numbers, by the, the, head, the header of PDF. Like, for example, if you're looking like percent and PDF dash one and what kind of version is it, uh, you need to be remembered, though, because uh, for the PDF specification, it said within 1024 byte, for the first 1024 byte, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's legitimate for you to declare the PDF version. For example, you have, um, uh, you have, uh, some weird numbers, like you can have percent, 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 or you have ABC, ABC, or whatever you want, and then you put percent PDF 1.1, it still can be considered as a PDF, as a, still can be considered as a legitimate PDF version. And then the second body for this one, if you can see over here, it's a pretty much the main component of PDF, uh, which is normally uh, have uh, object, normally been representing as a OBJ, 
and it needs to be end with uh, an OBJ. Uh, later on, I uh, will show some um, uh, some uh, rather obfuscation that we, you can implement when it comes to the to the object declaration, like this one. And then, of course, it's also part of the co major company inside here is the JavaScript. And you have on the yellow box, you have over here is uh, the cross-reference, uh, which is somehow defined the offset of each object, OK? And then the last one, you have trailer. Trailer is pretty much the main component th uh, that have one ma major component called slash root. Slash root especially uh, give you some a clue or some uh, entry point where your PDF uh, will start when you open the PDF, OK? And the last one is also interesting. You have uh, NO5, which is a representing of um, NO5 for the PDF. Uh, it declared a percent percent uh, uh, um, NO5, but um, it also can be, uh, you can also have multiple NO5. Uh, I will show you a demo later on on this uh, specific uh, uh, topic. So obfuscation, well, I commonly observed in the wild obfuscation method, uh, pretty much, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you have uh, JavaScript, and you have a PDF syntax, and of course you have a PDF uh, features, and the last one is probably you have uh, uh, media reach on PDF. Okay, the first one, uh, abusing the JavaScript to make your uh, PDF uh, undetectable or, or make your uh, uh, make your PDF become more difficult to analyze is uh, the sky's the limit. Whatever can be executed by JavaScript is pretty much can be rendered as well within the PDF uh, engine. And majority of uh, PDF reader application have a JavaScript engine. Uh, you name it, like Adobe have it, uh, Nitro have it. Um, you also have um, Fossic, and even you have Sumatra PDF as well. Okay, basically it's been uh, mainly been used for a runtime exploit setup, like uh, you're not gonna, um, uh, you know, put like plain text for your exploit, or we need a PDF, so you pretty much uh, construct during runtime for your exploit to trigger. And then of course you're talking about shellcode obfuscation setup, uh, normally you generate shellcode on the fly uh, to make, uh, it, well, well, to make your, 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 your PDF uh, obfuscated, I think. And of course, ma uh, majority of the PDL that we saw implementation of the JavaScript is mainly for heap spray. But uh, recently, if you notice, that is like a couple of uh, spray stuff is also uh, been implemented as well. And of course, the main reason is uh, to make analysis. Well, one of the main reasons is to try to make analysis harder. Well, how it look like? Pretty much, if you notice over here, you have wa a. This is a very typical JavaScript operation. You have wa a wa uh, B, and then you have what C, blah, 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 and then you have, uh, you combine all this, stu uh, this stuff and you execute it. And then uh, another typical uh, JavaScript uh, function that's been used is argument.curly, and another thing that's normally been used is uh, ASCII convention, like you have uh, 0, X, 4, 1 is basically representing 4, F, uh, A, and for example, uh, in within the PDF you have uh, a dictionary called a slash filter, and slash filter gonna retrieve some key value, which is a flag decode. And instead of representing as a flag decode, you can also spelling or using a ASCII convention. For example, you take a look at this um, sample over here. So it pretty much start with a um, uh, 50 A R E and so on and so forth. Okay. And of course, we see a usual suspect for encoder, like base 64, route 13, and so on and so forth. And normally for JavaScript obfuscation, they try to um, make a one-liner code, uh, because JavaScript always end the, the code execution by the semicolon. So the new line really doesn't bother. So normally they try to screw up the code, uh, the formatting of the code by implementing just one line of code. Uh, and then uh, sometimes you also have some spaghetti code. Uh, if you take a look at the sample here, you pretty much uh, notice this is just a declaration of function, and the last one is probably tried and uh, catch loop, right? But um, this is pretty much a try loop. 
But isn't Oh, okay. Sorry. Over here. So you should notice, so I can make it bigger. Oops. I don't think you guys can see it, right? Can you guys see it? But somehow, rather, uh, over here is kind of the loop that you can see, loop for try and catch. But really, this is not the, the execution path because it started at the, uh, earlier, uh, early, early on before that. Like, if you notice here, there is an if else function. Okay? So this is pretty much a very generic, um, you know, JavaScript uh, obfuscation. Uh, it's not really obfuscation, it's kind of like spaghetti. It's, you combine multiple code and function within, you know. And then uh, sometimes they also come with a p half pyramid. Sometimes, if you notice here, it's kind of like a running bunch of uh, hip spray stuff. So sometimes even can make pyramid. Probably the guy's boring, so make, try, try to make it look like pyramid. And then uh, dealing with the uh, obfuscation can be annoying. Normally, you just pretty much you always end up. Uh, it's always like, because there are many ways uh, people can fool you with the JavaScript. Like I said previously, JavaScript obfuscation is involved with uh, creativity. So if the bad guy is much cr creative than the an, uh, analyst, so you always end up like this way, you know, fuck or something, okay? But uh, I believe with the habit of tool, you will be probably more relaxed a little bit. So you kind of release, you know, because there is a tool for you to help you uh, to uh, automate or make your analysis more easier. For example, if you're talking about, you know, to run the JavaScript, you need to have some sort of emulator for that. Because you try to trace one, you know, by your bare hand, uh, well, I wish you good luck to, to, to manage to go through all the, the code. And for emulator, you have a spider monkey, rhino, or even you have, uh, can try uh, Google uh, V8. And of course, like I mentioned earlier about the code spaghetti stuff, uh, you can use a code beautifier, like a JS beautiful, uh, beautifier. Uh, which is pretty much have been port to almost IDE or, or code editor. And you can also implement some sort of a JavaScript uh, dynamic instru instrumentation tool as well to see the obfuscation, uh, to see the runtime of a JavaScript. Okay? But then, having said so, it's pretty much, if you take a look at the previous um, sample of the JavaScript, you pretty much can read all this stuff, right? But to maybe in the few future, uh, it may, uh, it may come to within this function. This is a this is valid JavaScript uh, implementation, okay? And then it may also come with the smiley characters for you guys. So this is kind of obfuscation uh, that you can see within the uh, JavaScript implementation in PDF. Uh, in PDF. And there's a second normal obfuscation that we saw is about uh, abusing the PDF syntax. For example, if you notice the slash root over here, which is I mentioned early on, uh, within the startup of the PDF, normally going to start with the slash root. At the beginning of it, need to go to root. And this one is specified the object slash, the starting point of this PDF, always going to refer to the object 21. Uh, it will be referred by, by the object 21. So any execution path will be start on the object 21. It's no longer about object 10 OBJ. Because the normal thing that we saw, the mistake that we've done, is when you start working with analysis on the PDF, you start by looking at the percent PDF version, and you go with one by one of the uh, PDF uh, uh, component. But really, you need to start from the slash root. And another thing is about referring to another object. For example, you notice the var here, okay, the, ob the variable var is a pointing to the function called, not a function, is a pointing to to, um, to object called this.info.title, which is the kind of OO representation, which is this normally refer to the object itself, I'm uh, sorry, refer to the PDF itself, and dot um, info is always referred to the another component, like for example this one, slash info, and slash info is a pointing for, it's a reference to the object five, so this is the object five, and then this is your title. So your variable of root will be this stream. Okay, that's pretty much uh, obfuscation that we saw on the PDF. Um, okay, I, I talk about um, the syntax of the percent 
uh, PDF and NL file, right? And normally, how you start passing your PDF file? If you're building some PDF tools or some, uh, to analyze a PDF, which one you start with? You're looking at the percent PDF version, or you're looking for NL file? According to the um, Adobe reference, you somehow should start from the end file of the PDF. But the problem is, uh, you choose to read from end file, which one is going to be your, the first end file? Because like I mentioned earlier, you can, all, you can have multiple end file within your single file of PDF. For example, this one. If you start from NL file, right? If you're passing your PDF file using NL file as a starting point, which NL file that you want to refer? Uh, you want to refer to this one, or you want to refer to this one? Well, this is pretty much legitimate declaration. If you open, it's not a it's not a malform PDF. Your reader, majority of reader, well, I have touched with the Nitro, Adobe, touched with the Foxic. And even events, they open nicely. This is not even a problem with this. So if you build a parser, which one you want to you, 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 you choose, okay? And then, for example, if you choose the last one, okay? If you choose the last one, okay? And then how about this? Okay, if you choose the last one on the end of file, and take a look at the object 12, okay? If you choose the last one, this one, this one. So in this NL file, you have multiple object declaration for the object 12. For example, you have one, you have two here. So which one is, if you start from here, which data now is representing by the NL file? Uh, sorry, we've been representing by the object 12. Because, if, for example, the first object 12 now here is have a data that say test first and of five. The second one is test and of five second and of five. And of five. I will show you a demo about this later on. And then another one here. Okay, but the truth is, if NOS, uh, NL5 is not even needed. It's not even needed. If there is no NL5, your PDF application or reader can somehow manage to render it properly. So the last one of the declaration, for example, on this one, if you notice from this one, the object 12, the last object 12 is always going to be uh, the one that will be picked up by your PDF application. So like I said, this one declaration for object 12, so this, the last object 12, will be always be executed, okay? So, so this is the one. So the last one will always be uh, been used by your PDF uh, reader. So for example, the demo. So the first one, um, let me open with this. If you open this file, oh crap. It's freaking slow. For example, this one, this is your first end of file. But you can put a bunch of other things as well below, below of it. Like uh, this is object 12. You end with uh, another uh, N of I. And this, this is interesting. You have here N of, you have object 12. And inside the object 12, you have another N of I. And then this is pretty much another, uh, the data that belongs to object 12. It's not this here, the second N of I. And you have another, the third one, uh, N of five. So if you open this file,
It's always slow when it comes to demo. Okay, so, so you just open NO5 uh, for the second one, right? Because the last one is always will be uh, the one that will be uh, choose by the PDF reader. So this one, um, I open with this one again. Uh, this one, it don't even have the like, NO5, but if you, if you open it uh, with any PDF reader, Everything is just fine. For example, uh, this one below this that is no longer NFI, but you have like object 12 here, and you also have object 12 here. And then if you just open this, you can still get an NFI. So very tricky one to find uh, where you can stop. When, you, when you're building the parser, it's very tricky where you want to find uh, a starting point and try to pass for every single object within the PDF. Uh, for example, uh, in future, I believe for the PDF uh, have something like this. For example, the, the reference to the object that create loop. For example, you have the object one that have the um, uh, dictionary for, for author, which is a pointing to object six over here, and object six ought to have also pointing to the object one. Uh, if you open it with any PDF application, uh, it may stop. But if you're building your own parser, when are you going to stop your loop, right? So that will be interesting to see um, when we should stop. Okay, um, then another thing is about uh, abusing the PDF syntax is, uh, is relate to the Acrobat are uh, specifically designed for for the PDF engine, especially for the Adobe, a couple of uh, JavaScript function like a get anot, a sync anot scan, a get page number, for example, get a word. Now, for example, get page and end word. This one uh, basically is try to get a word on page specific and get page and word to one. It's basically get the third word of page one, for example. So, and then you can select based on page as well. So this is pretty much uh, normally being, uh, you know, implemented with the obfuscation on the, on the PDF. For example, this is one of the functions uh, you can see. This one, like this, get page number, and this select page number something, okay? So it's very, very, uh, it's very difficult. To, and it's not, I would say it's a very difficult, but it's a very di it's a difficult to emulate all of the Acrobat Acrobat JS engine to to your own parser because this kind of uh, this kind of um, JavaScript code is not supported by default for like uh, uh, for public uh, Acrobat in, uh, PDF engine sorry uh, JavaScript engine like Spider Monkey V8 it's not being designed for this okay uh, another thing is like I mentioned earlier you can uh, abuse incomplete syntax for example like object stream for example this is object as uh, one, we start with a one, zero, OBG. So you pretty much expecting it need to be N with OBG. Uh, but then if you don't have an, an OBG, uh, that's no problem. Uh, your, your PDF application, we just load it fine. But if you build your own parcel, you need to know where to stop, right? And for example, this is a stream. You're expecting to have N stream. But if you don't have, it's also fine. And even funnier, you have stream, you have another stream, and you have end stream, you have end stream here. So which stream, which data that belong to this stream, for example? This one, or, or this one, or this one, or this one? All right, it's very tricky to analyze all of it. Okay, so another thing is, uh, like I mentioned, the problem with this is uh, difficult to emulate or, or to uh, automate within the parcel. Uh, something like I mentioned earlier, emulating uh, acro, acro JS code, finding stopping loop, and finding ending tag for like um, uh, and OBG and stream. And of course, need to understand how the PDF reader application parser actually work. But then, are we building another PDF reader application? I think not, right? We are building the, the, the parser that to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to analyze uh, the malicious PDF. Uh, I put it here, we implementing, uh, we organized a challenge for HoneyNet project last year. So a couple of tricks being implemented over there. If you're interested to see the tricks, so try to 
you know, get along with the challenge. And seems very difficult to, to automate this analysis, so manual tools are recommended. A manual tool is something like you, you don't really, you know, pass the whole thing, you just somehow grab any object and then you just display the object. So you can manually trace uh, the component that belongs to the object. For example, uh, you can follow the PDF flow. You can manually inspect each object or each stream so you know where it should end. And dealing with the acro jet is still pain in there. In there as a thing. A couple of tools that you can play around with are PDF stream dumper, um, PDF examiner, PDF uh, dissector, and file insect. Um, Another thing that you can abuse within the PDF uh, obfuscation is try to abusing the filter. Uh, the main category for here is I put uh, PDF features. Obviously, one of the normal features in PDF is uh, filter. Well, the main, comp uh, the main reason for filter is basically try to compress uh, the size of PDF, so you normally use some encoding uh, to compress it. So if you're using less known uh, a filter, for example, CC uh, ITF fax decode and DCTD de decode, it's pretty much a uh, highly chance for, for your malicious PDF not being detected. Uh, but uh, somehow in general filter, it's normally you have flag decode, ASCII hex decode, and a couple bunch of, uh, you know, ASCII, like ASCII 85, uh, J JBIG2 decode. And this is also interesting as well. Because if you see it at the filter uh, dictionary, it can accept a couple of parameters. So if you want to make your, your, your filter have some strict uh, parameter, so that if you're using like, uh, if you try to incompress without passing this parameter, your, your, comp your decompression will be filled, you can implement it within the parameter called decode pump. Um, for example, this one, uh, this code implement um, CCITF fax decode. It's normally for image, but really it doesn't really matter. It's not necessarily image. You can put whatever you want as long as it within the, the format of the uh, CCITF fax decode. Um, and then uh, you can also abuse the filter by implementing some multiple layer of filter. For example, you have a combining of ASCII 85 decode and with the LZWD decode. So you just combine between it. Well, there is no limit for you to, to play around with it. So you, if you can add a multiple filter on this one. For example, this one implement flag decode and going to do ASCII hacks decode later on. And you all can also do some abbreviation, especially on this one, like A55 is belong to ASCII 85 decode, LW, LZW is belong to uh, this one, LZW is decode. So this kind of uh, abbreviation somehow, if you don't put it within your password, it will be difficult for you uh, uh, to uh, decompress all these uh, filter. And another interesting part of this, uh, try to abuse encrypt. Uh, encrypt is something that when you have PDF, uh, security PDF, you normally try to put a password protected on this PDF, right? And if you put that as, uh, on, on the on, PDF, uh, on your PDF, so pretty much your stream and your string gonna be encrypted. Okay, so in, PDF, in Adobe, they're implementing uh, RC4 and AS algorithm. So for example, on this one, uh, this is not, uh, when I mentioned about encrypt, this is not really about protecting the document itself, it's rather protecting the stream. So for example, slash root have um, dictionary encrypt, so it will point to the object 76 over here. So if you took the object 76 here, it has declaration is going to be encrypted with the AES, which, uh, AES uh, encryption. And then, okay. So with this one, if you, if you ask like a password or something, like uh, normally you, when you open PDF, it will trigger like keep a pass, password for that. Um, well, we have a sample like uh, if, if depending on the slash root that where it start, you have uh, where you busy keeping the password is already can drop some uh, exploit that triggered exploitation already. So, and then of course it's somehow it's depend on the event like auth event. Like for example, you have dot open, 
So it will trigger when you open the PDF. Okay? So, but then if your slash root have a uh, pointer that points to different object that have exploit on it, so it will trigger that first. And then we ask the, the action from this um, event. Well, it's pretty much difficult to analyze it because simply the fact that you can down the string because you need to break the encryption out of it, right? So there is no plain text. So for example, a demo, uh, a quick one. All right, for example, um, I try to open this with a uh, file inside first to show that this file is uh, that have uh, enc encryption, like I mentioned, please go to your slash root first. A uh, flash root normally have uh, within the trailer. So here you have uh, like definition for encrypt, which is points to the object 29. But your slash root here have, uh, have the object pointing to object 10 first, okay? And then this encrypt have pointing to object 29, I think. 29. So if you go to the object 29, so this is pretty much uh, the implementation of our C algorithm for the encryption. Okay. So we have some like stream over here. For example, take a look here. This stream have implementing some sort of flag decode algorithm, uh, flag decode uh, filter. So pretty much if you try to decode this one using a zaplib Encoding it, uh, it should work. For example, if you select this one, uh, so you just select and then you right click and then you can, so you can go to decode and try to inflate. Of course you cannot do inflate, right? Because it's already been encrypted. And then if you run this using P a PDF application, the exploit might trigger uh, but then yet you couldn't find what kind of exploit I used for this one, All right? Uh, it would take a while for, for exploit to work because uh, I'm running some, some sort of heap spray on, on top of it. So it took, took a while. Uh, I think I, we go to this uh, screen af, uh, after a couple of, like, uh, uh, all right? So. And then another, the, the, the fourth one that we normally see within the P PDF application is, tr is, is try to abuse on media reach on the PDF, uh, uh, PDF reader, because the fact that they have uh, ma many media type that they support, so pretty much you can embed a couple of um, media, for example, AIF.MOV.MP3, and even now that S SWF. Um, so if you attach any exploit within the PDF file against this media player, well, you normally win because uh, people don't, uh, people are not really suspicious to click on PDF rather than clicking on their MP3 and .mov that come over your email or something. Okay, and normally uh, for the PDF uh, is used uh, against the flash zero day, so you have uh, normal PDF good looking PDF, it's not malform, but you have uh, bugs on Adobe uh, and the PDF, uh, on the flash, you get on as well. Right, uh, how does it look like within the, your PDF structures? For example, you start with a slash root again. Uh, you check slash root is pointing to object 31, uh, and then object 31 have the page, pointing to ob page object one. So you go to the object one here, and then you have page, and page somehow have a reference on the object 12. You go to the object 12, and object 12 is somehow have a flash, uh, a flash um, uh, file on top of it. Okay. If you see uh, SWF is basically, um, CWS is basically compressed file, and then this is uh, another one called FWS is uncompressed file. Uh, sim PDF is just uh, pretty much the main transporter for this one. Um, you need to extract the 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 uh, the, P, uh, the, the, the flash file to to check what is the exploit, what kind of shellcode inside it. 
Okay, so tools normally you can use like PDF stream dumper and plus the PDF uh, examiner for this one. And then of course you can do a flash analysis later on to, to trace what's really happened when you open the PDF. As we know, the PDF um, have engine for the, uh, for the flash, right? So for the flash analysis, uh, pretty much very ideal for us to decompiling flash bycode, which is normally tried to tr uh, from the AS3 or the AS2 to AS2 or AS3 code. Um, idea, but so far I saw is only two software that, that do a proper decompiling on this one, but it's the commercial, so you can somehow integrate this kind of tool within your, your parser. So, so thing flash uh, the compiler have uh, uh, the compiler for this one, and if you look for the PDF uh, stream dumper, they have uh, another proprietary tool as well called AS3 uh, software on this one. So this is pretty much the um, the, the, the compiling code look like on the AS3. It's pretty much AS3 code here, and if you cannot do the compiling, you can always do some bytecode analysis here. So for example, this one is pretty much try to construct the knob slack for the uh, shellcode. Uh, you can see over here that's push some stuff, push integer, and this is a couple of loop over here to assign um, the, the array. And this is another uh, pushing some, some uh, ROP gadget on top of the shellcode. And then pretty much here, you can also put uh, some shellcode and try to trans translate it and try to do encrypt it. So when it comes within the PDF, you just have a properly, encrypt not say encrypted, properly uh, obfuscated uh, flash file uh, within your, your normal PDF. Let's see for this one. I think this is a pretty much, uh, when you open the PDF, uh, the demo just now showed that when you open the PDF, uh, it just gives you uh, a calculator, and then you crash, but then again, you can, you, we don't even know what is the, the exploit that used for this one. All right, so this is pretty much, uh, you know, this is, uh, is, this is not the main focus of, of this presentation. I just show here basically how you can do analysis on the flash exploit that embedded within the PDF, okay? And then, so this is a challenge and issue I, I would like to share with you guys and hope there is a probably answer for a couple of these uh, challenges. I would say uh, building a complete PDF process is a task. It's a very tough task. Uh, having a lexical analyzer is one thing, but the not so standard of processing object is another, okay? And um, embedded component also need attention like phone, how many, how many exploit that uh, leverage on phone that been used? Uh, recently, you, you know, on iOS, uh, jailbreak me three is also starting from the phone as well, right? And of course, uh, media, flash, uh, audio and stuff is also main, main problem as well now to address within the PDF processor or PDF analyzer. And of course, it's a try to fully compatible JavaScript to emulate this is very painful especially that have a specific on AcroGS uh, function. And inspection of the whole part of potential education within the PDF reader application contact is hard. For example, if you try to uh, analyze outside of contact of PDF uh, reader contact, it would be difficult to, to find out the flow of it. For example, you have app version, viewer version nine, it will have a different execution. So you need to mimic all this environment within your, your analyzer. And well, even though they have a challenge and, uh, challenge and issue, I think a lot of effort have been done to, to translate within the tools, like you have PDF miner, uh, you have origami that can be used by, for, uh, within the library on, Python, uh, on, on Ruby, and of course you have a famous DD Steven stuff, uh, and then PDF stream damper, PDF dissector, which is a commercial, I think, that one, and PowerView. Yeah, even, the, uh, and then it's also a couple of our online uh, PDF analyzer as well. Uh, the one that we built is uh, called Galus. And uh, then I think the Web Power Fame, JS Unpack, and PDF uh, Examiner. And the last one is also built by our friend, our pre previous presenter about PDF uh, analyzer called APTU Geezer. 
So still, all these applications that have been built, it's not fully 100% uh, are comparable with how the PDF reader application works. So it's very tricky. And then conclusion that I can draw from my presentation for today is uh, many application methods to hide a malicious PDF, like uh, you can do our JavaScript, you can do a PDF syntax, you can abuse some uh, features. And for the features, it's also lead to many problems on this one. Like you have slash filter, uh, which is, gives you uh, some sort of independent to uh, you know, do some encod encoding. And you also have something like slash uh, launch to launch whatever command that you want. Well, it's, it's nice, it's convenient, but it also can lead to a different um, you know, problem as well. And you also have like slash encrypt, which is I just showed a demo. And again, encryption is a major stumble block. Good to protect your, your secret data. And then it's also so dust for the zero day uh, protection as well. You can protect a zero day within this encrypt uh, function. A uh, more complex technique on exploitation will make uh, analysis more difficult, I think. Uh, for example, Comex PDF from iOS uh, to lead to the kernel exploitation. Of, of course, there is a kernel exploit a bug as well on this, right? Uh, and of course, um, I don't know, big malicious PDF embedded file scanner or detector engine within the, the reader application itself is a good idea because uh, I believe it would be good because you have uh, a context within the PDF uh, reader, you know, okay? But for some reason, I think it's also a bad idea if you add another engine on top of it, you add a complexity of code base uh, which is also meant to do bugs within the engine itself. It would be embarrassed to have the code to do a scanner for malicious, malicious stuff. It's also vulnerable for the bugs, all right? So um, pretty much that's conclusion. And if you're interested in this PDF weirdness, you can read all this PDF uh, reference from Adobe, this one. And of course, you can also read, um, well, they have a different reference on both of these. Uh, this one is uh, specifically for JavaScript scripting engine, so you can b read on this as well. And of course, a couple of researchers have been working on this, like Sebastian Foss have been working on this, and also so Julia Roof has also been working on this as well. And then, yeah, thanks for all these people that have been working on this field. And then I think that is all from my presentation for today. <laughs>